In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a large variety of editing tools. I'm going to start with the copy clipboard command. What this command can do is copy entities from one drawing into another drawing. In this example, I have a plat with a piece of property. I have another drawing called plat2 that contains additional property lines as well as a stream bed. To use this command, I just simply pick two corners on the screen and window in all the entities. You can see by the grips that they are all selected. Then from the Edit drop-down menu, I find Clipboard and hit Copy. I then return to my original drawing and I can either go back up to the Edit Clipboard and hit Paste to Original Coordinates or that same option is available just by right-clicking on an empty screen. Find Clipboard and Paste to Original Coordinates. As long as the entities are based on the same coordinate system, they will drop right in place without the need of defining a base point and an insertion point. Another great feature that Carlson has is shortcuts for layer manipulation. In the view, Pull down menu, there's a variety of layer control, such as set to the current layer or freeze a layer by picking an entity on that layer, isolating layers and restoring layers, etc. I'm going to clean up this screen a little bit by using the freeze layer by pick command and select the border as well as the bar scale and the north arrow for now. To restore those layers, I can go back under the View pull-down menu and hit Thaw Layer. That command thaws the last layers that were frozen using the Freeze by Pick Layer command. You can also restore all layers or thaw all layers with a single button by hitting Thaw on all layers, which thaws and turns on all layers. You can also save layer states. For example, once I have all the layers set exactly the way I want, I could save these as a final layer that is prepared for printout. So under the view menu, I find layer states and save layer state, which saves this state in an external file with an extension .lay and I can create a layer state for a final plan. Then when your drawing is in various states of layers being on and off during the creation and drafting process, you can simply go back under view, layer states, and hit restore and restore that final layer state. This is a very useful tool to share various layer states throughout a company. Another commonly used tool is under the edit command and the command is called join nearest. Now the purpose of that command is to take entities and join them together in the form of a polyline. If I select the line work for the edge of this river or stream bed, you'll see that they are all individual lines. Especially for the command I'm going to use shortly, I really need those to be polylines and I actually prefer them to be polylines. So I can execute under the edit pulldown, join nearest, and a dialog box appears. In this dialog box, you can set options to control how each entity is connected to one another. The first one to note is the maximum separation to join. The default is one foot. That can be set as low or as high as you want depending on the type of entities and the accuracy of joining those lines that you desire. For example, a property line, you would not want to have a one foot gap between lines and still allow it to join. However, along the stream bed, a one foot gap may be fine. I'm going to set that to a tenth of a foot. A deflection angle filter can be used to determine whether or not sharp angles in those lines will be connected or not. That will prevent lines connecting such as this red line connecting to the blue line at such a sharp angle. 
I am going to control my selection set instead of using that filter. When the program finds a gap between two entities, it needs to know how to connect those gaps. You can average the endpoints together, which will slightly move both endpoints into an average location. Directly connecting them will draw a separate entity connecting those two lines, and a fillet with zero will extend the lines or trim them until they touch. You can also convert lines and arcs to polylines with this selection, so if they're not already polylines, it will convert them before joining them. Jumping across inter intersections, joining identical layers, widths and elevations are also other options. I hit OK and select the entities that I wish to join. At the completion of the command, I have two continuous polylines. There are two very interesting offset commands. I'm going to edit offset. There is a median offset. This command specifically is to determine the midpoint between two existing polylines. Is it intended for a situation exactly like the one in this example? We have two edges of a riverbank and we would like to determine the thread, the median point in between those two polylines. So if we use medium offset, we have three options. An intersection option will find the intersecting point when you, of the two polylines offset to each other and hold those intersecting points. The salient and normal method both calculate the thread of the river by drawing a line between each vertex on both polylines, figuring the midpoint and then drawing a line between each. I am going to use the normal option. I pick the first polyline and the second polyline. The prompt asks if whether or not I would like to draw chords of parabolas. I am going to select no for that option and it asks to draw perpendiculars for check. I am also going to select no for that option. When the command completes, it draws a series of lines that intersect the midpoint between the two riverbanks. Using, once again, the join nearest command, I can join those individual line segments into a single polyline. For ease in selecting the polyline on that odd shape, I'm going to type WP when it asks me to select entities for window polyline. That allows me to actually create a shape and limit my selection. When I hit enter, it selects the lines within that odd shaped window and joins them into a single polyline. Another interesting and very useful offset command under offset is the buffer offset. For this example, I would like to offset the edge of the riverbank closest to the house 100 feet and make sure that all points along that offset line are no more than 100 feet away from the closest point of the bank. The buffer offset is designed for exactly that purpose. I execute the command and it just simply asks me the offset distance. I type in 100 and you just select the line you'd like to offset and the side for it to offset. It creates a polyline with arcs that are 100 feet away from the angle points in the original polyline. Carlson's 2D align command works very similar to the traditional align command with the exception that it will not pick up a Z value regardless of the entity that you're snapping to. In this example, we have a sketched in house footprint and we would like to move and rotate it onto the field located points represented as points number 18 and 19. To execute this command, under the edit pull down, align fly out, we use 2D align. Select the entity, which is the house footprint, in this case it is a polyline and then pick the first source point, which will be one corner of the house, and the first destination point, 
which will be point number 18, which I can just type at the keyboard. Then the second source point is another corner of the house. And the second destination point is number 19. Again, I can just type 19 at the keyboard or snap to the node. The command temporarily draws two lines indicating the source and destination points to confirm that you have the right points. It also then asks if whether or not you would like to scale the object. In most cases, you will answer no to that. In some cases, however, such as moving, rotating, and scaling an image onto known ground points, it could be a very handy option. So I will select no and hit enter, and the program moves and rotates the selected object onto the points. Another great editing tool is the ability to search and replace for symbols. In this case, I have symbols representing trees, and they're all the same throughout the drawing. I would like to replace the pine trees with a different symbol to better indicate a different type of tree. To execute the command, you go under the Edit pull-down, Change Flyout, and then Block Inserts, and substitute. A dialog box appears that shows all the existing blocks within the drawing. If I'm unsure of which block it is that I need to select, I can select from the screen. We'll select that tree. It highlights the block named tree 3. I am not going to replace it with a block that's already in the drawing. Instead, I'm going to select a new one from the point symbol library. I am in the category trees. I am going to select a different tree symbol. I have options then to retain the tree to be on the same layer, same size, and same angle. I am going to resize the tree, and the new size is going to be 15. When I hit OK, the program asks me to select all the blocks to be changed. Since it is filtering my selection set by the block name itself, I am able to use a large window without fear of over-selection. When I finish my selecting set, the prompt indicates that there are two entities in that set. When I hit return, it substitutes and rescales the blocks.